Ten on Sports Central, we go over our next team projection of this offseason, and it's going to be over the Miami Hurricanes, a team that finished out at 8-3 last season. Not a terrible year for Miami, as this team was a contender in the ACC for sure. But how is this team going to do going into 2021 is what we're going over here today. We're also going to be going over a few players that Miami will be losing, who are going to be returning, and also looking at their schedule for the first time this offseason, starting out with the previous six games for Miami. And this team over the course of last season was actually very consistent. They were 8-3 overall. And even though they kind of fell short at the end of the season, they took two straight uh, pretty tough losses. This team still has several really good wins over the course of the season. They beat Virginia 19-14, beat NC State, which NC State, they were a pretty good team last season. Uh, beat them 44-41 in a shootout on the road. Also beat Virginia Tech, good team there, 25-24. And they shut out Duke, 48 to nothing was the final score there. And then again, Duke was a terrible team last season, probably the worst team in the ACC, but still, whenever you're able to shut out a team, it's a very impressive win. So for Miami, they did have a shutout at the end of the season. They did lose to North Carolina 26 to 62. That was a very tough loss there, blowout loss uh, there against the Tar Heels, which North Carolina was a great team last season, but certainly, I mean, Miami just could not finish last season. I mean, they were they were eight and one going into that final uh, North Carolina matchup, and they could have easily uh, been a ten win team this past season. But at the end of the season, things kind of fell apart for Miami. But still, once again, not a bad season. This was definitely a very good season in comparison to how the last couple have gone. But for uh, for North Carolina, very good win for them. They also lost or Miami. They lost Oklahoma State 34 to 37 in their bowl game. So they also had a loss to finish out the season. But first five games for Miami, they were four and one. Last six, they were four and two. Looking at your roster preview going to next season, the returning production is excellent for Miami. If you look at this uh, this team all around, I mean, the returning quarterback, Garrett King, he was a transfer in from Houston going into the 2020 season, and he put up a very impressive 2020 season, putting up over 2,600 yards, along with 23 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, also had a 64% completion rate, so a very good year for Garrett King overall. He's definitely going to be a quarterback to watch out for next season. I could easily uh, see him be a top 3, top 4 quarterback. In, um, in the ACC next year. So Derek King, watch out for him. Uh, Cameron Harris is coming back. That's going to be a big return at running back. Uh, he put up over 770 yards, 11 touchdowns last year. They also returned their second running back in Donald. Um, it looks like Donald Chaney, he's coming back as well as he put up just right around 500 yards, three touchdowns. Watch out for him. This running back core in general is looking excellent going to next season. The skill players, I would say in general for Miami are, are, are looking excellent going into next year. You got Derek King, Great running back core. You got your top two running backs for coming back. Um, top wide receiver, Mike Harley's also coming back to this team. He put up over 800 yards last year with seven touchdowns. Uh, don't forget about um, Brevin Jordan, though. That's going to be a tough loss there. He was their tight end, and he was their uh, second receiving last season. He's going to have a very bright future in the NFL. But he put up nearly 600 yards for the Hurricanes last season, along with seven touchdowns. Big year for him, and that's going to be a tough loss. But they do return their second receiver in Mark Pope. Uh, so that's going to be also a big return as he put up just over 400 yards on last season uh, with a couple of touchdowns as well. So this receiving core and the skill players in general for Miami are looking excellent. Only loss really in the in the skill player category is um, Brevin Jordan on the tight end position. But they do lose three defensive linemen. Uh, I mean, this offensive line is looking really good. The defensive line is losing three, though, and they lose one in the secondary there. They've got great returning production. This team has got a lot of potential moving forward. Um, just going into next season, they got great recruiting coming in. Uh, this team has got a lot of potential going into next season. That's definitely a word that you're going to hear a lot around Miami going into, into the 2021 season is potential. This team with Derek King, considering how experienced he's going to be, this team, I think, is the one team. I mean, North Carolina, North Carolina is going to be pretty good as well. But this team, I could easily see being the main contender in the ACC other than Clemson. Like Clemson, of course, is the powerhouse. They're going to continue to be the powerhouse for quite a while. But Miami, they're not going to be far behind. This team is definitely going to be a team that's going to be, I mean, they're going to be up on the level of Clemson, I really do think. I think this team with Eric King, watch out for them next season. Um, yeah, chances of winning their division, though, overall for Miami, this team has got, once again, tons of potential, great roster overall. They do have to get past Clemson, though, if they're going to win the conference, which Clemson is going to be a tough one to beat. they got a young team that's coming up this season, but uh, they always have great recruiting and everything is super great with depth in Clemson. So I don't 
I don't expect Clemson to have a fallout year. I definitely think that team is definitely going to still be a national contender. But Miami, this, this Miami team definitely is capable, I think, of being a big competitor to Clemson. But look at your schedule for next season. You start off the season in a tough one against Alabama. You don't have to play Clemson in your regular season, which is good. And that really opens the door as well to uh, making it to the ACC championship game. But you do have to play Alabama. That is definitely going to be a tough game there to start off the season. I mean, that's in week one on September 4th. They got to play the Crimson Tide of Alabama, the defending national champions. So that's going to be a very tough game there. Uh, but then, of course, you got Appalachian State, Michigan State. This is a brutal schedule for Miami next season. And that's, that's definitely something that I'll uh, point out right away. Like two of your non-conference games are outside of the conference. And then, of course, you got CCSU, which that's going to be your one uh, pretty, much, pretty much easy game. Uh, guaranteed win game and then you got Appalachian State of course who also could be pretty good next season so this is a brutal schedule for Miami definitely the toughest schedule that I've seen so far this offseason having to play Alabama Michigan State I mean Michigan State's not gonna be as good I don't think next season they'll still be a contender for a bowl game but I mean that's that's a power five opponent there and otherwise I mean the non-conference looks pretty tough but for Miami at least you don't have to play Clemson in the regular season like if you had to play Clemson that would be brutal but yeah, this is a pretty tough schedule. Otherwise, I mean, if you're looking at your first half of your schedule, Alabama, I'm not going to say that's a guaranteed loss quite yet. I'm going to keep it as a close one for now, mainly because Alabama is going to be pretty young going into that game. They got great depth in Alabama for sure, but that team's going to have a brand new quarterback, new running back. Vontae Smith is gone from the wide receiver position. Alabama is going to have a lot of young talent in that first game. So I'm going to keep it as a 20 to 80% game for now, but that is definitely going to be... Um, I'm, I'm probably favoring Alabama right now. I think Alabama is just too good uh, with recruiting and everything right now. Uh, Bryce Young at quarterback, that team's going to be once again good next season. Appalachian State, I'm going to say it's a guaranteed win for now. I just think with uh, Miami having the experience already of a big Alabama matchup, they should come back and get a win against Appalachian State. Michigan State, I'm favoring Miami right now in that game, mainly because it's in Miami. But Michigan State could be a sneaky team next season. I mean, they're returning a decent amount of production. Um, I haven't really looked a whole lot into Michigan State quite yet, but that's definitely a team that I think uh, could give Miami some trouble. But I would favor Miami right now over the Spartans. CCSU, that's going to be a guaranteed win. Same thing with Virginia. I don't expect much out of Virginia next year. North Carolina is going to be a close one. I think the Tar Heels next year are also going to be a really good team. I think your big three, your big three teams in the ACC next season will be Clemson, Miami, and North Carolina. North Carolina is also going to be up there. They're going to be the main competitor for Miami. I think next season in their division. So definitely something to watch out for there. NC State, um, then of course in the second half of the season, that's going to be a close one, I do think. Uh, NC State next year is going to be halfway decent, I think. I don't expect them to be great, but that could be a close game. Uh, Pittsburgh is going to be close as well. Georgia Tech, that's a guaranteed win. I don't expect much out of them. Florida State, Virginia Tech are also going to be a close games. Florida State, the main reason why I've got them as yellow game is because it's on the road. And when you're having to play on the road, you never know what happens in college football. So I'm going to keep that one as a yellow one. Virginia Tech is going to be a close one. And then Duke, of course, at the end of the season is going to be a win. So I'm giving you five guaranteed wins going into next season with Appalachian State, CCSU, Virginia, Georgia Tech, and Duke. Uh, otherwise, I could easily see Miami being I mean, the ceiling for this team. I'd say is 11 and 1. I consider putting 12 and 0 up there, but just because of the really tough non-conference and this team's tough schedule in general, I'm not going to put 12 and 0 up there. I definitely think this team is capable if they had an easier schedule. But 11 and 1, I'd say, is the ceiling for Miami. 10 and 2 is the projection for me right now. Once again, these are just projections, so this isn't actual predictions uh, because we're so early on in the off season right now when this is being created. But projection is 10 and 2 for Miami. I think this team definitely is capable of being at least a 10 win team next season. They've definitely got the experience and the potential for that. Floor though, that's kind of the bottom line. That's kind of where I think uh, is going to be the minimum amount of wins that Miami will get next season. That's going to be 8 and 4. I think I think uh, Miami next season, that's going to basically be the bare minimum for this team. I could easily see them going 10 and 2 and above though. Uh, Miami is definitely a team next season with the experience and Derek King. This team is going to be a team to watch out for. That being said, that wraps up my projections for Miami. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Hurricanes. Let me know your record predictions, all that down in the comments. I appreciate you guys all watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central, and I'll see you guys all later.